This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. So we have some good news and we have some bad news. Which one should we get started with? I'm thinking let's go with the good news first and then we'll kind of go into some medium news and then maybe some bad news as well. I'm mostly gonna be talking about the R5, a little bit about the R6 as well. If you're interested in shooting video with that, you definitely wanna stick around. Um, I also wanna say that I am getting some 8K and some 4K footage sent from the R5 and I'm gonna test out how difficult is it to edit this 10-bit HEVC footage, 4K 60, 120, and especially the 8K footage. So if you guys wanna see some tests on Mac and PC, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and enable those notifications. Let's get right into it. Here on Canon's Japan website, they listed some information for a firmware update. The first one I already heard about is the ability to shoot 1080 at 120 frames per second. That wasn't there at the start. I'm glad they are adding that. And I don't know how long it's gonna take for this firmware update to be released. The second update is lower bitrate IPB compression video and lower bitrate RAW. And that is fantastic because right now, in order to record 50 minutes of 8K RAW, you need a one terabyte card and that costs over $700, just 50 minutes. The data files are large, but if we take a look at the speeds for that really extremely expensive card, that card could do like 1,500, whereas if we do the math, we only need 325, and Canon only allows it to be written to that card. With that said, the fastest SD cards can almost do what is required. It's shy by about 25 megabytes a second. So with this lower bit rate, we will be able to use less expensive cards, and hopefully they allow us to write to SD cards because now we have fast enough options. So that is fantastic. Now the third one is probably what I'm most excited about, the addition of Canon and log three in my previous video I mentioned that they're only including C log one the original and that means they're artificially limiting the dynamic range of every single option that you have other than the 8k raw to 12 stops of dynamic range so you choose either massive files and 8k to get your full dynamic range or be limited on top of that you're gonna have a harder time matching up to any of their other cameras the cinema line as a B or a C camera if you're using the R5 for that but now with this edition you don't need to be shooting 8k raw you can shoot 8k compressed or you can shoot any of the 4k options you'll have 14 stops at dynamic range up to 14 instead of capped artificially at 12 and an easier time matching up. So now I don't think most people even need to shoot raw with the option, so that is fantastic. Now, before we get into some of these new negatives and some of the downsides that are happening that I found out after my last videos, let me give a shout out to the sponsor, Squarespace. Does your website suck? Maybe it's really old, maybe your SEO is really bad and you really need to get a new one. If so, Squarespace is seriously the best way to go. You can replace your sucky website and build a brand new one with literally no web making experience. It doesn't matter if you want a portfolio, a blog, e-commerce, or anything else, you just choose a template and customize blocks of text and images. It's incredibly simple, it's affordable, it doesn't overheat. Ours have been running flawlessly for years now, bringing in new clients thanks to its built-in great SEO tools. Start your free two-week trial with no credit card needed by going to squarespace.com slash or by using the custom link down below. And when you're ready to launch, you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So Canon just released a statement about the R5 and R6 overheating. This is from New Shooter. They're saying they did take steps to manage overheating. They use magnesium alloy to dissipate heat. That's interesting because it's usually used, but it does dissipate heat from the internal components. And there's an overheat control function that will reduce heat generation while you are not recording. In the menus, you're framing your shots, stuff like that. And if some of you guys didn't know, Matt Harris put out a video that uh, highlighted an interview done and a Canon rep said this. Even if the camera is sitting down, stand by, not recording, um, it is still doing something. So there is still, the temperature is still increasing. If you have the camera in your hand, you're going through the menus, uh, adjusting loads of things or going through playing back videos, stills, um, the camera's temperature is going up. Which is not a great thing. They also mentioned that if you want to reduce the heat buildup, this is what you gotta do. Make sure that mode is on, that will help a bit. And then between recordings, they recommend turning off the camera, getting it out of the sunlight, 
and you can also use an external fan to dissipate the heat. So that sounds a little bit funny, popping a fan on there. Um, some of us have done that with Sony's, I will admit, so it's not an only a Canon thing, uh, but it's, it's just very interesting to hear that. So maybe put in a cooler with some ice packs, as long as there's you know no condensation, I don't know. But if you cool off the exterior, the interior will cool down as well. They mentioned that uh, as far as fans, the reason they didn't put one in is because they wanted to keep it small and lightweight, and they wanted to have the best weather resistance, which makes sense. I do still wish that they had a fan. And here's a cool thing, before the recording starts, the R5 and R6 will tell you an estimated time that you can record based on the mode you're in and the temperature inside the camera. That is great, so that if you're choosing one of those modes that heats up fast, you'll know approximately how much time you have. I'm glad they put this in. I would have loved this on my older Sony's. Thank you, Canon, that is great. It's gonna help with the usability. Now, they also published this nice detailed chart, which I wish they would've gave us before all this started to leak out, because there's some good news on here. I'm only gonna mention the stuff that I didn't mention before. For 4K60, if you use the APS-C crop, that is 5.1K oversampled, and then you actually get 10 less minutes of recording, so that's not good. But the good news is, if you want better detailed 4K60, you'll get that from the crop mode. Now, along with that, if you don't want the high quality quality 4K mode, you can actually do full sensor width or APS-C crop 4K 30 or 24, and you won't be limited by heat. That is excellent. Now there's a stipulation, this is marked at 73 degrees Fahrenheit, 23 degrees Celsius, uh, meaning they're using this indoors in a room just like this. And in a room like this, my A6300 would last 45 to 50 minutes shooting YouTube videos. But as soon as I take it outside in the sun, 85 degrees, it would last about 14. So hopefully this not limited by heat is um, outside as well, not just inside in a perfect temperature out, you know, out of the sun. I really like that this 4K30 APS-C crop is 5.1K oversampled, so that means that your APS-C mode is gonna be higher quality than the full frame mode, more detailed, potentially better low light, even though it's APS-C, and what matters even more to me is the moiré and aliasing. Uh, we could have less issues with that compared to full frame. Now I know a lot of people are gonna want to use the full width of sensor, full frame 4K30 or 24. In that mode, we still don't know what the quality is gonna be like. If you guys remember the A7R2, that had pixel binning in full frame and then it had about a 5K crop, very similar to this. In that full frame mode, it was less detail, had moiré aliasing issues, and it it was horrible in low light, but it was bad. Moving on to the A7R 3 same sensor, but the full frame mode was way better than the R2, a little bit less detail still, but the algorithm was much, much improved. So we have to see how good is Canon's algorithm in that full frame mode, um, how, what's the detail gonna look like, and more importantly, are we gonna have the ugly aliasing and moiré issues that can ruin things like interviews? Um, it, it just really gets in the way and looks bad. We'll have to check that out. Now, for the bad news, the EOS R6 does not have this kind of pixel bin mode from what I'm seeing. All of the modes that we have on here, they all have overheating. 30, 35 minutes, or 40 minutes. So we don't have a mode that says not limited by heat, at least at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so if you are gonna get those cameras for weddings or documentaries or interviews, you might wanna step it up to an R5 because based on what we know, that at least has some modes that are not limited by heat. And overall, I wanna say, this whole thing really kind of got blown up. I think if Canon released this, it would have turned out better. A lot of people have made great points like Armando that people are still gonna buy this camera, they're gonna figure out how to work with it. If you're on a higher end production, you could buy a couple of them and not have any issues for the higher end stuff. Um, and we have the 4K30 that says not limited by heat. It's gonna be a great camera, especially if you're already in the Canon ecosystem. This is gonna be a huge improvement in a ton of ways. And this camera, the R5, offers so much for your money. It is incredible, especially with those firmware updates. I'm excited to get my hands on it and be able to test this out for you guys. So make sure you guys enable those notifications. Once again, I'm doing that 8K and 4K uh, playback test on Mac and PC. If you guys wanna see that, make sure you're subscribed and check out Squarespace if your website sucks. Their websites are fantastic, they're easy, and they're inexpensive. Thank you guys for watching, this has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.